Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mariama, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the America Mobile Second Quarter 2020 conference call and webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. Now I will turn the call over to Ms. Daniela Laquana, Head of Investor Relations. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss America Mobile Second Quarter 2020 Financial and Operating Results. We have today on the line Mr. Daniel Cash, CEO, Mr. Carlos Garcia Moreno, CFO, and Mr. Oscar Gonzalez, CEO. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being in the second quarter 2020 financial and operating report. And uh, Carlos Garcia Moreno is going to make a, a, a summary of the of the results. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Good morning, everyone. Well, towards the end of the first quarter, the financial markets in disarray, and the employment numbers in the U.S. collapsed, threatening to worsen the economic contraction stemming from lockdown measures and of controlling the spread of the COVID-19 virus. The Federal Reserve announced a huge monetary quantitative expansion program. This decisive action gradually stabilized the financial markets, allowing for new issues of security throughout the second quarter, and quelled the excess demand for U.S. dollars that has resulted in its appreciation currency. Since then, substantially all Latin American currencies began to recover, with the notable exception of the Brazilian real, which declined an additional 4.8 percent of the dollar. At any rate, the Mexican peso, the Colombian peso, and the Chilean peso, all of which have dropped sharply in the first three percent, 7.9, respectively, in the second quarter in which practically all our region of operation was on the lockdown. Final measures adopted throughout our region of operation partly on account of the closure of shops and customer trade centers, and partly because they generally curtail the mobility of population and hence the altogether we lost slightly more than 5 million uh, 500,000 in the posted segment with most operating posted base. Notable exceptions of Colombia and Telecom Austria. 2 million disconnections in the prepaid segment, really net disconnections. It's a platform in the U.S. and Colombia. Both of which added slightly more than 200,000 clients each. These connections were more important in Mexico, 1.7 million subs, Peru, 1 million, and Ecuador and Guatemala are at approximately 450,000. In contrast, on the fifth line segment, we gained 450,000 new broadband clients with every operation posting and increasing clients, except for Telecom Austria. There were, however, TV services, particularly in Brazil, which accounted for 190,000 TV disconnections out of 358.5 million access lines, a million wireless subscribers, and 81 million TV line ID use. It is of note that our Colombia operation no fixed and mobile products during the course. Our second quarter revenue total of 252 billion pesos, off slightly from the year earlier quarter, 0 0.6 and revenue falling 37% percent in Mexican peso terms. On account for the most part of the depreciation for reporting currency versus the dollar and the euro over the year which was approximately 
The support from the U.S. and Puerto Rico, the reduction of the treatment sales as a result of the confinement restrictions, the conditions for cancer treatment in most operations. At constant exchange rates, including Argentina, given its high penetration of the cancer methodology, service revenue grew up 0.8%. The door generated on the mobile platform rising 2.3% and those coming from 0.7%. The deceleration in service revenue growth, 5% in the first quarter, to resulted from the direct effect of the region and its economic fallout. At 2.3%, mobile service revenue growth slowed down sharply from 8.4%. Brazil and Colombia with increases of 8.8% and 4.8% respectively. On the fish and platform, the impact of COVID was more limited, with the pace of decline of revenues going from minus 0.7% in the first quarter to minus 1.7% in the second quarter. More in Colombia, fish line revenues actually accelerated to 9.9% up from 9.5% deployed the quarter. The deceleration in mobile service revenue growth was practically identical in pre pay and in post pay with revenues of seven and improving trends began to be listed. In pre pay revenues were affected by the lockdown measures as clients charges of most shops were ordered shot, including our own customer care centers. The impact on revenues was affected most are more prevalent, including in post a slight switch to lower cost of plants in anticipation of the economic difficulties they were to face. In various cases, small and medium sized enterprises that had to close under the confinement restrictions. So to discontinue the service or, or reduce its cost, the ability of data services. We try to stay close to our clients and help them find plans better suited for them given the economic difficulties that many were on it, that they would stay current in the payments. In percentage points, the decline in post growth rates was steepest in Ecuador and Panama. Equipment sales plummeted early in the crisis. Bottoming in April, as you can see in the chart, but climbing back rapidly during the remainder of the quarter. Six broadband services continue to lead the way within the group, with revenues increasing 7.3%, very much in line with the pace seen the prior two quarters. With only one exception, all our operations posted six broadband revenue increases in the quarter. Our less mature pipeline operations, including those in Ecuador, Peru, Argentina, and Costa Rica, all performed well with the pace of growth picking up speed. Second quarter EBITDA, total daily 2.6 billion pesos, it was up 5.9% uh, in Mexican peso terms, with the EBITDA margin climbing 1.7 percentage points to 32.9%. At constant exchange rates, it increased 3.3%, reflecting in part the impact of new commercial arrangements by platform in the U.S. that brought about reductions in network costs to be applied from January 1st. Our operating profit jumped 10.5% to 40.9 billion pesos and helped bring about a net profit of 20 billion pesos in the second quarter after allowing for financing costs of 11 billion pesos, which were 6.3% lower than in the year earlier quarter. Our net profit, equivalent to 30 pesos cents per share and 26 dollars cents per ADR, was up 40% from the same quarter last year. At the end of June, our net debt totaled 755 billion pesos, up from 677 billion pesos at the close of 2019, which reflects, among other things, an increase in the values of dollar and euro denominated debt vis a vis the Mexican peso. It stood at 1.39 times EBITDA on the prior methodology of EBITDA. In cash flow terms, our net debt came down by 8.3 billion pesos in the six months to June. 
In addition to the above, our cash flow allowed us to cover capital expenditures in the amount of 53 billion pesos and to devote 6.2 billion pesos to fund labor-related obligations. In Mexico, service revenues came down 2.1%, mostly on account of mobile service revenues that fell from a 10% growth rate in the first quarter to a minus 2.5% in the second quarter, with decline service revenue showing a very slight decline quarter over quarter. In Brazil, post-trade revenues proved to be very resilient, observing an 11.8% increase on the yearly quarter. Although down from the rhythm of the first quarter, it was nonetheless quite a remarkable pace. This growth and revenues stayed on trend, presenting practically the same pace of growth in the first and second quarters. All the above helped bring, bring about an outstanding jump in EBITDA, which was up 10.7% year on year, with EBITDA margin reaching 40%, which is the highest it has been in, in Brazil. Uh, finally, a note on Colombia. It was the only operation to grow net up on all business lines. And in addition, it managed to present increasing revenues on both the mobile and fixed line platforms at 4.8% and 9.9% respectively. With this, uh, thank you very much for listening to the call, and I will uh, pass this over back to Daniel Hash. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And we're going to start with the Q&A. At this time, I would like to remind everyone, in order to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. Your first question comes from Walter Pychik with Lightshed. Your line is open. Thanks. Just a question on the, um, obviously, the very strong performance of margins of track phone in the United States. Um, you talked about a repricing going back to January, so I, I assume that the margin was benefit from some catch up from the first quarter. So when we think about Q3, um, where you don't have the kind of the benefit of the first quarter, what should the margins look like in that in that US business? Um, and can you talk a little bit more about kind of which carriers gave you that benefit or is it across the board based on the competition that's in the market? Well, uh, I think we have a, a very strong uh, quarter in track fund, not only in the carrier cost. I think we have also a very strong performance in uh, in uh, sales, uh, in uh, net ads. Uh, I think we have more than 100, uh, 200,000 net ads in the quarter. So I think with all the – what uh, the U.S. is giving – uh, uh, our prepaid uh, market is growing uh, good, and uh, and we have a very good quarter. The the we 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 have uh, uh, discussions and revisions with our cost carriers, uh, the cost of service, and uh, we have a reduction in the cost of 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 the of the service, uh, and uh, we have been negotiating that through. Uh, all this year, at the beginning of this year, and uh, starting from 1st of uh, uh, January. So we finish in the second quarter, but starting first quarter. So I think you are going to see so also benefits in third and fourth quarter, as you are saying also. No, So our, we're working with all of them, reviewing with all of them, and, uh, well, that's mainly what uh, I can say, no? So Daniel, did did the margin was the margin helped from some catch up credits from from kind of backdating the pricing from the first quarter, or is that really the new margin that you're going to operate at this fifteen percent? No. Um, no, we're catching margin. we're catching we're catching what we all what we have in the let's say we have around a hundred and thirty million uh, dollars uh, that we put from this. In the second quarter, and it's $65 million from first quarter, $65 million from second quarter. So that's more or less that, – those are the numbers. And I think we're going to have uh, more or less the same in the third and in the fourth quarter. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your next question comes from the line of Rodrigo Villanueva. Your line is open. Yes, thank you. Uh, hi, good morning. 
I have three questions, if I may. Uh, the first one is if you could please elaborate a little bit more on the potential alternatives to create value uh, from your towers. Uh, would you be considering a spin-off as you did with telesites or a scenario that transaction? Uh, also, uh, are you considering to do this with the vast majority of the 60,000 towers you currently own? And then I can ask the, the following questions. Thank you. Uh, on the towers, uh, Rodrigo, the only thing I, 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 I can say and uh, the only thing that we have today is we have we own 60,000 towers uh, in Latin America and in Europe. And uh, we are analyzing the different alternatives to give value to the shareholders, as we said, and to, to reduce our debt. So we don't know if uh, there's going to be spin-off or we're going to sell them. We still do not know exactly if, if there's going to be in all the countries or only in some of the countries. So we are analyzing, we are today uh, analyzing what is uh, the best uh, thing to do to, 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 for all these assets uh, and to give value to our shareholders of, of these 60,000 towers that we have. Nothing, I, I don't, it's not because I don't want to say anything else, it's because we still don't have anything. We are really, really analyzing different alternatives on that. Understood, Daniel. Thank you very much. Uh, the second question is related to Huawei. Uh, we have seen several countries around the world, including Brazil, uh, considering to stop using Huawei equipment for 5G networks uh, with increased pressure from the U.S. government. Uh, do you think this could be extended to other Latin markets? And could you please uh, share with us any potential strategic alternatives uh, that could reduce the negative implications for AMX from a potential uh, Huawei ban in that time? Well, uh, we, we are not hearing anything uh, today, uh, still until today. We are not hearing anything about uh, uh, ban Huawei in the rest of Latin American countries. We are hearing something in Brazil, but nothing formal, okay? So still hearing some news, but nothing formal from the government. So that's the only place where we're hearing something. Uh, they are talking about 5G. So still we haven't had and we haven't taken a decision in 5G. So all 4G, 3G, there's nothing, uh, 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 that's everything, it's okay. So still we don't know what to do. There's another vendors uh, there, there's Samsung also, Nokia, Ericsson, so still a lot of competition. So if there's a ban on Huawei, we still have uh, other uh, uh, vendors than that, that uh, we can use. So uh, I think Huawei is an excellent uh, uh, technology, but uh, still we don't know uh, if there's going to be uh, something in the other LATAM countries. No. Understood. Thank you very in, much. In the, in the, the European, uh, okay. uh, sorry, in in Austria. We're using Nokia, so I don't think there's a problem there. So in Europe, we are in 5G. It's the only country where we already, because we're making testings and we're doing something in 5G, but uh, the only decision that we already take is Nokia in, in, in Austria. So there's no problem over there. Understood. Thank you very much. And the final one uh, is regarding operating performance in Colombia. As Carlos mentioned, it was pretty strong, particularly considering the COVID crisis. And I was wondering if this has to do with Telefonica's lack of willingness to invest in that time and spread in Brazil. And if you would expect a competitive environment to change uh, now in Colombia, considering that Novator Partners acquired uh, the operations of Avantel. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I, I think we have been doing big improvements in Colombia through the last two years. Uh, 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 Colombia has been improved not only in 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 one segment. We're improving in postpaid. We're improving in prepaid, in corporate customers, in peaks, in broadband, in TV. It's the only it's the only country where we grow in TV also. So we have been uh, uh, and improving a lot through the last uh, year, two years maybe. Two years are starting to work very hard, and the last year we have been improving. We change a lot our organization. Uh, we have been investing uh, uh, good over there. So I, I, I don't think it's only one thing. I think we're making a lot. 
Uh, you know everyone, that uh, we have the option in in the beginning of the year. We win some uh, frequencies, and we're going to have a new competitor that is uh, warm. And, uh, well, with w new competitors, maybe it's going to change a little bit. It's going to be more competition in the uh, prepaid uh, uh, and postpaid in the mobile side. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a more competition, but I think we are prepared. We have a very good brand. We have good distribution. We have a, 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 a very quality capacity. So we are prepared to compete in Colombia, Rodrigo. Understood, very clear. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank, thank you, Rodrigo. Your next question comes from the line of Alejandro Galastra from BBVA. Your line is open. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, uh, Daniel, Carlos, Daniela. Uh, thank you for your call. Um, my first question is related to the uh, mobile business. Uh, you mentioned a uh, deceleration in mobile revenue growth that was similar in both the prepaid and postpaid segments. Um, however, I would have expected them to behave differently with uh, postpaid, most probably being more expensive. So um, perhaps you could, uh, you could give us um, a further explanation of why this was the case uh, in your opinion, or maybe provide us with uh, additional breakdown. And uh, my second question is uh, related to the broadband operations, which have proven to be very resilient this quarter. Uh, but the performance has been quite different among countries. And uh, perhaps uh, you could explain the differences um, in the performance of, of the broadband operations in, in Mexico and Brazil, for example. Thank you. Yes, well, I, I think uh, uh, prepaid uh, and postpaid are different, uh, different uh, markets and they are behaving different. Uh, well, it's, it, if you compare, let's say, Mexico and Brazil, I think uh, Mexico, we have more than 50% of our service revenue in uh, prepaid and 40% uh, 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 on postpaid. So that's why we have been more hit in the revenues because at the beginning, April and May, prepaid uh, people, uh, we have a lot of uh, stores closed. Uh, we have in Mexico, well, all around Latin America, people were not out of their houses. So it was different. Uh, it's very difficult to sell over there. And in a lot of countries in April, we give some packages to help people with this uh, pandemic. So uh, le let's say an example in Mexico, we give uh, a package called Amigo Contigo that we give uh, uh, free calls for 15 days for free. And uh, there's around uh, 28 million packages that we do in, 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 in April. So, well, that's what is happening. And April, May, and in June starts to, to, to grow a little bit, to recuperate in the prepaid side. Different in Brazil. In Brazil, only 20, 25% of our revenues are, uh, uh, are prepaid and the rest are postpaid. Then what is happening in postpaid? Postpaid is different. People is starting to reduce their plans. If they have a 500 peso plan, they want to go to, to a 400 peso plan or, uh, or reduce their gigs or they are taking, being careful with their money. So we are seeing some reductions on, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the rent of their plan. So that, and in the other side, what you are going to see is that you are going to have a lot uh, uh, bad debt in the, in the, in the postpaid. So there's going to be people who are going to stay without a job and maybe they are going to cancel and not paying you some of the, of the, of the bills. So that's more or less how we feel it's going to behave uh, uh, prepaid and, and postpaid uh, all through Latin America. In the broadband, I think uh, all, all around we're doing good. Uh, Telmex uh, do good here, 64,000 in the, in the, in the three months. Uh, 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 Brazil, 100,000 broadband uh, subscribers. Uh, uh, Colombia, we also do very good. All overall, we have been growing 
our net ads of uh, of uh, of broadband. But Oscar, of Oscar, if you can uh, talk a little bit more on on the on the on the broadband side, please. <coughs> you know, given given the pandemic and the, and the pushing the people uh, work of from home, the requirements of bandwidth in the homes has been increasingly. Uh, very much so the people in the home is doing you know taking classes and uh, working from home and a lot of uh, streaming of video and gaming so that I think uh, that push uh, the product and that's what, what Daniel mentioned we are getting these net ads and not only net ads uh, the, the, our customers are asking for more bandwidth uh, in, in, all, in all the countries Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Oscar. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel and Oscar. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Marcelo Santos from JP Morgan. Your line is open. Hi, good morning. Thanks for, for taking my question. I have two. Uh, the first, uh, could you please provide some um, view on how things evolved during the quarter? You, you mentioned a little bit. Uh, how like in, in April and May uh, prepaid was lower. So could you expand a bit and talk how, how prepaid, postpaid uh, evolved and how things ended in June just so that we could get a feeling of how the trends should shape up for the third quarter? This is the first question. The second question would be uh, regarding your appetite for m &A. So whatever you could call or you could provide on that, uh, we have... Uh, some assets on sale, especially in Brazil. So, if you could provide some update on that, would be very good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, in prepaid and postpaid, I think uh, what you uh, let's talk uh, uh, especially uh, in in prepaid. As I said, people stay in home in April and May. So, uh, we're with the, the the reduction in sales of the prepaid cards uh, were higher than what we're seeing in June and July. So as, as the economies are open and starting to be more open and, and we have more stores and then the retails are open, we are seeing that uh, prepaid is starting to, 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 to grow a little bit from what we have seen in April and, and, and May. So that's all overall in, in, in Latin America. Still, some countries are opening faster than the other ones. Other ones are opening and then returning to close a little bit. So, uh, uh, still, we are a little bit uncertain of uh, what, uh, uh, when we're going to have all the economy open, uh, totally open, as we used to have at the beginning of the year. So, uh, it's different in all the, in the post pay side, as I said, uh, um, people is uh, reducing their ARPU, trying to 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 take care of, about their money, their rent. They don't want to pay if they don't use it. They are staying at home, so maybe they use more the Wi-Fi, and uh, and that uh, makes them feel that uh, that uh, they don't need. Uh, the X amount of gigs that they have in their plan, so that's why they are reducing a little bit. But I think all overall, everything is going to return as what we used to have at the beginning of the year. It's going to take a little bit of time, uh, uh, take time also for the economies to recover, to open, but I think everything is going to return. On M&A, well, if you are talking about OI in Brazil, we are at, uh, we are aware uh, and uh, we are interested in 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 the assets. So uh, for us, will be a good fit. We do Nextel. I think in Nextel we have uh, all the synergies done. I think through the mostly of the synergies done. I think at the end of the year we're going to have almost all of the synergies done, uh, except for the towers that we need to reduce. Uh, some towers that we already have, uh, uh, extra towers that we already have, but uh, all, all, all the rest of the synergies we have been doing very good. Uh, the frequencies that we get are very good also help us to have more capacity, and uh, if we can do with OI to have more customers and, uh, and, uh, and, and capacity also will be good. So we are interested and we are going to participate in the, in the OE option for the mobile side.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Diego Arreguio with Goldman Sachs. Your line is open. Yes, uh, hola, Daniel, Carlos, and Daniela. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, I guess the first question is uh, still regarding your performance in Brazil. Can you walk us through the main pillars for such a strong performance in mobile? I mean, if we would compound this growth, such as like the post trade needs increase, uh, pre paid recharge, upgrade, downgrade to plan, how do you see on your uh, growth would be compounded? This is my first question. Thank you. I, can you repeat it because I don't hear you very well. Can you be, talk a little bit louder, please? Yes. Uh, can you hear me well? Sorry. Sorry. Yes, yeah, a little bit better, yes. Okay, yes. So, so I was wondering if you can walk us through the main pillars for your performance in the Brazilian market, in particular to mobile business, if you can compound the growth such as like the postpaid mix uh, in terms of like the prepaid recharge, upgrades and downgrades to plans, and compound how your year on year growth, uh, you know, uh, what's uh, this uh, in this quarter? Very helpful. Yeah, I think in in Brazil we're doing great. I think we have a great platform. It's I I cannot only talk about uh, mobile. I I I think our mobile platform is great. We have been increasing capacity, doing more coverage. Uh, speed is very important in Brazil, and we are moving also and doing uh, uh, a lot of uh, things in the network to give a very good speed. Uh, 4G, 4.5G. So we're investing and we're doing very good in Brazil. Also in the in the in the Pix platform, we have a, also a great platform. We have a, a 20, 30 million households pass, uh, a lot of broadband, pay TV, uh, uh, a great uh, platform of pay TV, and also we have very good management in place and good strategies for that. So all overall, we are doing good. And in this quarter, uh, 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 we also reduce, uh, and, and not only in Brazil, in all uh, America Mobile, we have been increasing and reducing, uh, increasing efforts to reduce cost and expenses. So I think that's something that we have been doing very well and uh, help us to gain market share. Let's say in Brazil, in postpaid in the first quarter, I think the revenues were growing 15% year over year. So it was an excellent uh, first quarter. Uh, I think second quarter is still very good, uh, uh, growing. I, I, I think it's around 8%. I don't remember exactly, but uh, uh, only in the post rate. 11. 11. Sorry? 11.8%. 11.8%. So it's still working and, and, and doing very good. We're making our bundles with the peak uh, uh, broadband and TV. So we have a good platform and we're investing there and we're managing very well our our company. Nextel give us also good frequencies to 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 give more uh, capacity and speed to the customer. So all overall, uh, I don't think there's only one thing. I think all overall we're doing very good. Okay, uh, thank you, Daniel. And I guess uh, my second question is uh, related to your margin. If, you can, if I can just, uh, you know, follow up on these. When I look to the region, there are like several, let's say, moving parts that lead me to believe that margins have, you know, some room to expand. For instance, uh, you mentioned easing competition in some of the markets, right? Industry consolidation, uh, even like the rising of infrastructure players uh, in Latin. And lastly, but not least, let's say digitalization trends. So I would like to hear from you, how do you see these trends impacting American model, and how much do you expect to benefit in terms of margins going forward? Thank you. I think, I think Carlos wants to answer, or do you want me to answer? Uh, can, can you, if you need, I could tell you here. Can you please? Uh, I, I, I can tell you a little bit about the margins. I think uh, uh, margins grow in terms of percentage. 
uh, all around Latin America because two things. First, we have less, uh, the, the service revenue uh, was mainly uh, growing and the equipment revenue was reducing a lot. So that's why the, 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 the margins grow, especially let's say in, in, in Mexico, no? The, the margins grow because uh, equipment revenue were down. The other important thing is the, that we're, as, as I said, reducing and making big efforts to reduce cost and expenses, very important. Uh, 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 we're moving a lot more to the digitalize all our network, our sales, uh, we're, we're trying to do everything digital, so we're working very hard on IT on that, and it's also going to reduce uh, as the expenses. And, uh, uh, well, uh, 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 as you said, m and in Latin America, well, we're seeing a new competitor in Colombia, but then in Brazil, maybe uh, if OI is, 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 is going to be sold, then uh, sell, uh, then there's going to be less competitors in Brazil. So uh, all overall is moving uh, in some directions in one country, in other directions in other countries. But all overall, uh, I think uh, our margins can, 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 can go the way we have been uh, having the margins, growing a little bit and growing our EBITDA also. No? But I don't know, Carlos, if you want to say something else. Okay. No, I think, I, think, uh, I don't really have anything more to add. I think it's, it's important to note that, uh, the, as I may say, uh, they were very significant purpose of reducing uh, costs. So uh, some of them are permanent. Uh, anything that has to do with digitalization, simplification, all of that is uh, permanent. Uh, obviously, having uh, been on the more of a... Of a uh, the situation like the one that we are facing, it is uh, uh, more urgent to think about some cost reduction, so we have been very focused on that. Then there's uh, some things that also came down inevitably because of the confinement, so marketing expenses and the like, you know, anything that is more commercial related, those are temporary reductions, they also came down uh, for some time. Uh, but, uh, but we are seeing, uh, you know, as I said, uh, if you look at the uh, illegal margins, uh, they increase practically everywhere, and that part they have to do also with the reduction in equipment revenue that we had uh, in particular markets, say, for the U.S. And, uh, and Puerto Rico. And, and one more thing that I want to add is also it's going to depend a lot on the economies, okay? The, uh, uh, let's see how the economies all around Latin America are going to behave, no? So let, let, let's see, uh, let's see uh, how 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 does this uh, pandemic is going to result at for uh, t till the end of this year and the next one. So it's important uh, 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 that. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Fred Mendez with Fredesco. Your line is open. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone, and, uh, and thanks for the call. I have uh, I have two questions on, on on pretty much the same line here. I just 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 want to get a better understanding of these uh, strong ads for Telmax, uh, especially on, on broadband, six hundred sixty-three thousand. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, other companies already uh, reported results, and then the net ads were also quite strong on the second queue. So uh, my impression here is that the penetration of the service it is increasing. Uh, so just want to confirm with you if this reading it is correct. Uh, instead of more like a gaining market share from other places, looks like the size of the market is increasing. And then also if you can give us a, a breakdown of the net ads, if it's more towards FTTH, or if you're still being able uh, uh, to gain clients uh, uh, with, with copper. Uh, this will be my question. Thank you very much. Okay. Oscar, do you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you're totally right. I mean, uh, has been an increase in uh, on penetration. And we are getting net, net gains from fiber, as you know, and as well from copper. So I wish sell half of half coming from fiber and coming from copper. Or you are totally right. What we've been seeing in the market is that the penetration is increasing. 
Perfect, perfect. Thank you. And if, and if I just, uh, if, if allow me just, uh, just for a, for a follow up, uh, I do understand that close to uh, 25 to 30 percent of your network today in Mexico it is already uh, uh, FCTH. Just wondering if you, if you have a, not your guidance, but just an estimate of, you know, uh, if you plan to uh, continue to aggressively grow uh, uh, this network, or if now the, the main focus would be uh, more toward the leverage in the company instead of uh, deploying capital stored uh, STTH. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, within the, you know, the situation that we are living, we are focused really on migration of customers and improve the penetration of the network in the next months. Perfect. Thank you very much, Arthur. Thank you, Daniel. No, thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Maria Azevedo with Santander Bank. Your line is open. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, my first question is a follow-up on the topics. Uh, you just comment. What is the topic strategy for 2020? And specifically in Brazil, do you see room to, to be a little bit more rational and cut the spending this year to the 20% you mentioned on the first call? And um, the follow-up question would be on 5G. You launched the first initiatives in Brazil. Do you think the 5G market appeal is going to be on consumer mobility? Uh, is there room to charge a premium for 5G services? Or and do you see it as a substitute to fixed wireless access? What, how is going to be the 5G strategy for the company? Thank you very much. Thank you. On, on, on the CAPEX, it's, uh, it, it, we have been reviewing that. Uh, I think uh, we are going to reduce the CAPEX from the, the uh, our forecast that we have for this year. Yes, we're going to reduce. Still, we don't know exactly uh, how much uh, we're going to reduce that. We're still reviewing and uh, seeing how does the traffic is going to behave. Uh, uh, and uh, also the sales, no, because part of our capex is some capex related to the sales of net ads, new 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 customers. So also we're gonna see how much uh, we are not cutting anything there. So we're gonna see how much uh, and how does that is gonna behave. So still we don't know. We are a company that uh, moves fast and we're flexible. So we're gonna use. Uh, and do what is necessary to do, but we think that we can reduce capex from the forecast that we have uh, 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 this year. So that's mainly in 5G. I think yes, we're doing something in Brazil, and 5G is going to work. Uh, it's it's a it's a very good question. I hope we can mark up and 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 sell a little bit more at a higher price, the 5G than 4G and, and, and 3G, but it's also going to depend a lot on competition and what those, and, 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 and customers, and also 5G is going to work for the fixed wireless assets. So that's what the, the intention is, and uh, we're going to do that all around Latin America. So that's that's what we got. Thank you very much. Just as a quick follow-up, uh, in, in terms of capital allocation priorities, would you also consider a potential network spin-off? And how do you see those network sharing deals happening in last term? Thank you. No, we're not considering a, a network uh, spin-off uh, at this moment. We we we, uh, we haven't considered anything there. And uh, well, I think uh, in some in some places makes sense to have a, a shared network. In other ones, doesn't make sense. Maybe in the rural areas where there's going to be a small traffic, make a little bit uh, of sense to 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 make uh, shared networks in. Uh, in other places where the growth is and then you have to add and that capacity doesn't make sense for us. Uh, but uh, we are not considering to, to, to spin off any part of our network. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Carlos Legarada with GBM. Your line is open. Hi, thank you. Good morning. Um, sorry, to go back to the U.S., please. Uh, yeah, I just want to understand this new agreement. Was it perhaps a result of, um, uh, basic, perhaps a consequence of the M and A between T-Mobile and Sprint, or what was the origin of this? Thank you. 
Well, I don't think it's related to something special. I think uh, uh, this uh, reduction in cost is related to the market in the U.S. and that uh, uh, our uh, our carriers want us to be more uh, uh, to, to 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 be more uh, aggressive sometimes in the market to have better plans and to react faster uh, uh, to 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 that. So that's mainly what we have. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know if T-Mobile and Sprint merger will help us to to do this. I don't know, but it it wasn't related to that. Okay, we have been discussing this, and we discuss this every year. So uh, every year we have been discussing new plans, new rates, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's something that 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 happens this 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 time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's very clear. And if I make a follow up. And perhaps for Oscar, and just the, the broadband additions of 64,000 um, don't seem to be a great number, given that the past quarter you guys have more than 100,000, and Televisa reported over 250,000 uh, quarterly additions. Do you think maybe there's a, a difference in the trend policy that could explain this uh, such large yeah. difference between the numbers uh, between you guys and, and the, competent, the competition? Yes, we changed a little bit the the, 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 the policy of uh, on collection in order to uh, liberate network. So you are right. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Oscar. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Ernesto Gonzalez with Morgan Stanley. Your line is open. Hi, thank you so much for the call. And just one follow-up on the margin expansion. I don't know if you could give us more color on what is the percentage that comes from lower equipment sales, how much comes from cost savings, and on cost savings. How much could we expect to be structural and how much from temporary items? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't have it here. Uh, I think what we have been having is good negotiations on CAPEX. Uh, we have been having also reduction on uh, cost of, uh, let's say, sales, reduction of cost of uh, marketing, reduction of cost of uh, uh, all overall, all the cost and expenses related to the operations. Uh, we have increased our cost in the bad debt, so in, in uh, we have been having more uh, uh, on collectibles than what we used to have. Uh, so, but I don't have uh, country by country, but uh, as I said, we have a very good uh, uh, effort on, on reducing uh, uh, costs. So, uh, uh, I, I don't know if that's clear, So, I, but I don't have it uh, specifically for, for country and how much per segment. I don't have it here. It's very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Valentin Mendoza with Benort. Your line is open. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking my questions and congratulations on the, on the results. Um, I have a couple of them uh, regarding your Mexican operations. The first one has to do with you could give us an update on, on the launching of the 5G, which seems in the headlines uh, that you're ready to launch in Brazil. But uh, I, I just want to know what are the plans up to date for, for Mexico. Mm. And then how well, follow up, if I may. Yeah, I think in Mexico, uh, 5G is going to be delayed. I think uh, we, we're going to have some uh, testings, maybe testings at the end of the year, but uh, we're not going to have 5G this year. I think it's, we're going to have 5G until next year. All our network uh, uh, is working excellent and giving every, uh, 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 with all this lockdown uh, and, and using also a lot of uh, uh, people using broadband, wireless broadband through in, in their home is working excellent. So. Uh, I think uh, 5G is going to be uh, 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 moving to, to next year. We're going to have some testings at the end of this year, but we're going to move 5G to till the next year in Mexico. Thank you very much. Uh, my my question has to do with um, uh, your thoughts. If you could share with us your, your thoughts on regarding the interest of the two MBNOs in Mexico, Televisa and, and, and Walmart. 
with a very aggressive commercial strategy. You just, you just mentioned also that you're seeing some customers switching to lower cost plans. And, and I was wondering, you're, you're planning to address this, this with uh, probably some uh, plans with all inclusive like they just launched? Or, or what's your thoughts on this side? Well, I think uh, 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 you have two MDNOs. Well, it's more competition in the market, but uh, we have two MDNOs that you know, but we have been having six MDNOs uh, uh, for the last two years. So there's another two that are coming in this quarter, but we already have like uh, six or seven MDNOs there. Uh, it's more competition, of course, uh, but I think we have the best network. If if uh, they are entering with uh, Altan, I think still Altan doesn't have the coverage that you need for a mobile service. Maybe they have a good service in their home, but when you go out and move, then I don't think that's the best service. So uh, we have also very competitive plans. We have a 199 pesos plan, uh, so unlimited voice, unlimited uh, data, uh, sorry, unlimited voice, unlimited social networks, SMS unlimited, and with some data. So we are also competitive, and uh, of course, more competition, este, uh, then uh, uh, we're having more competition, and este, but uh, I think we're prepared to compete. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraints, this was the last question. I will now turn the call back over to Mr. Daniel Hash for final remarks. I'll just uh, thank everyone to be, uh, for being in the call. Uh, uh, thank you. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.